Introduction Hey students, now we are going to start our new chapter, Limits and Derivatives. Can anyone tell me what limits are? Sir, limits mean approaching some value. Well said Jatin. And which concept can we derive from the limits? Rate of change, sir. Absolutely correct. Do you know that derivatives is the term which we use for rate of change? Hmm. Today, we will learn about limits and derivatives. So, come with me. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Find the limits of various functions Find the right-hand limit and left-hand limit of various functions Find the derivative of a function Analyze that how fast a function is changing Intuitive idea of derivatives let us assume that a particle is moving along a straight line and that the functions s is equal to f of t describes the position of moving particle at the time t. In physics, such a function s is equal to f of t is called a motion. Suppose the particle passes the point p and q at the time t and t plus delta t respectively. If s plus delta s are the respective distances from some fixed point o, then the average velocity of the particle during the time interval delta t is delta s by delta t is equal to function of t plus delta t minus function of t whole upon delta t is equal to distance traveled upon time elapsed. Below is the graph of distance versus time. Limits When you say limit, that means approaching. Let's use this function as an example x square minus 1 by x minus 1 and let's work it out for x is equal to 1. 1 square minus 1 by 1 minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 1 by 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 by 0. Now, 0 by 0 is a difficulty. We don't really know the value of 0 by 0. So, we need another way of answering this. So, instead of trying to work it out for x is equal to 1, let's try approaching it closer and closer. For x is equal to 0 0.5, the value of function is 1.50000. For x is equal to 0 0.9, the value of function is 1.90000. For x is equal to 0 0.99, the value of the function is 1.99000. For x is equal to 0 0.999, the value of the function is 1.99900. For x is equal to 0 0.9999, the value of the function is 1.99990. For x is equal to 0 0.99999, the value of the function is 1.99999. Now, we can see that as x gets closer to 1, then x square minus 1 by x minus 1 gets close to 2. Here arises an interesting situation. When x is equal to 1, we don't know the answer. It is indeterminate. But we can see that it is going close to 2. So instead of answering it 2, we say the limit of x square minus 1 by x minus 1 as x approaches 1 is 2. And it is written in symbol as limit x tends to 1 of x square minus 1 by x minus 1 is 2. So, we cannot tell the value at x is equal to 1. But we can say that as we approach 1, the limit is 2. Limits Test both sides. It is like running on a path and suddenly you will find a break in the path. Let's try from the other side. For x is equal to 1.5, the value of the function is 2.50000. For x is equal to 1.1, the value of function is 2.10000. For x is equal to 1.01, the value of the function is 2.01000. For x is equal to 1.001, the value of the function is 2.00100. For x is equal to 1.0001, the value of the function is 2.00010. For x is equal to 1.00001, the value of the function is 2.00001, also heading for 2. So, that's okay. When it is different from different sides, what if we have function fx with a break in it 
like this. This is a function where the limit does not exist at A. You cannot say what it is because there are two competing answers. 3.8 from the left and 1.3 from the right. But you can use the special minus or plus signs as shown to define one-sided limits. The left-hand limit minus is 3.8. The right-hand limit plus is 1.3. And the ordinary limit does not exist. Do you know, are limits only for difficult function? The answer is no. Limits can be used even if you know the value when you get there. Nobody said they are only for difficult functions. For example, limit x tends to 10 of x by 2 is 5. We know perfectly well that 10 by 2 is equal to 5. But limits can still be used. Example, consider the function fx is equal to x square plus 5. Find the limit of this function at x is equal to 2. Solution. Let us compute the value of function fx for x very near to 2. For x is equal to 1.9, the value of fx is 8.61. For x is equal to 1.95, the value of fx is 8.802. For x is equal to 1.99, the value of fx is 8.960. For x is equal to 1.995, the value of fx is 8.9800. For x is equal to 2.001, the value of fx is 9.004. For x is equal to 2.01, the value of fx is 9.0401. For x is equal to 2.1, the value of fx is 9.41. The value of fx at x is equal to 2 should be greater than 8.9800 and less than 9.004. So, when x approaches from the left, the value of f of x is 9 as given below. Limit x tends to 2 minus of f of x is 9. When x approaches from the right, the value of f of x is 9 as given below. Limit x tends to 2 plus of f of x is 9. It is also computed that at x is equal to 2, the value of f of x is equal to 9. Limit x tends to 2 of f of x is 9. Given the function y is equal to minus 1 if x less than 0, is equal to 0 if s equals to 0, is equal to 1 if x greater than 0. Calculate limit x tends to 0 of y of x. Solution. Limit x tends to 0 minus of minus 1 is minus 1. Limit x tends to 0 plus of 1 is 1. The function has no limit at x is equal to 0. Limits Algebra of limits Theorem 1 Let f and g be the functions such that the value of both the functions at x is equal to a exists. Then, following results can be written as Limit of sum of two functions is the sum of the limits of the functions. Limit x tends to a of f of x plus g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x plus limit x tends to a of g of x. Limit of difference of two functions is difference of the limits of the functions. Limit x tends to a of f of x minus g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x minus limit x tends to a of g of x. Limit of product of two functions is product of the limits of the functions. Limit x tends to a of f of x into g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x multiplied by limit x tends to a of g x. If g of x is a constant function say g of x is equal to p so we can write the limit as limit x tends to a of p into f of x is equal to p multiplied by limit x tends to a of f of x limit of quotient of two functions is quotient of the limits of the functions whenever the denominator is non-zero limit x tends to a of f of x by g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x by limit x tends to a of g of x. Limits of polynomials and rational function. Let f of x is a polynomial function given as. It can be found that limits 
x tends to a of f of x is equal to f of a. The function is said to be a rational function if f of x is equal to g of fx upon h of x, where g of x and h of x are polynomials such that h of x not equals to 0. Then, limit x tends to a of f of x is equal to limit x tends to a of g of x by h of x is equal to limit x tends to a of g of x by limit x tends to a of h of x is equal to g of a by h of a. If h of a is equal to 0, then there can be two conditions. If g of a not equals to 0, the limit does not exist. If g of a is equal to 0, then we find the limit by the method. Let g of x is equal to x minus a raised to the power k multiplied by g1 of x, where k is the maximum of powers of x minus a in g of x and h of x is equal to x minus a raised to the power l multiplied by h1 of x as h of a is equal to 0. Now if k is greater than l then limit x tends to a of f of x is equal to limit x tends to a of g of x by limit x tends to a of h of x is equal to limit x tends to a of x minus a raised to the power k multiplied by g1 of x by limit x tends to a of x minus a raised to the power l multiplied by h1 of x is equal to limit x tends to a of x minus a raised to the power k minus l multiplied by g1 of x by limit x tends to a of h1 of x is equal to 0 into g1 of a by h1 of a is equal to 0. If k is less than l, the limit is not defined. Theorem 2. For any positive integer n, limit x tends to a of the difference between x raised to the power n and a raised to the power n by difference between x and a is equal to n multiplied by a raised to the power n minus 1. The expression in the above theorem for the limit is true even if n is any rational number and a is positive. Limits of trigonometric functions. Theorem 3. Let f and g be two real valued functions with the same domain such that f of x less than or equal to g of x for all x in the domain of definition. For some a, if both limit x tends to a of f of x and limit x tends to a of g of x exist, then limit x tends to a of f of x less than or equal to limit x tends to a of g of x. Theorem 4. Sandwich Theorem. Let f, g and h be a real functions with the same domain such that f of x less than or equal to g of x less than or equal to h of x for all x in the domain of definition. For some a, if both limit x tends to a of f of x is equal to l is equal to limit x tends to a of h of x, then limit x tends to a of g of x is equal to l. Theorem 5. Two important results are, limit x tends to 0 of sin x by x is equal to 1. Limit x tends to 0 of 1 minus cos x by x is 0. Example, find limit x tends to 2 of x square minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. Solution, given limit x tends to 2 of x square minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. Rewrite x square minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 is equal to x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is equal to x minus 1. Hence, Limit x tends to 2 of x square minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 is equal to limit x tends to 2 of x minus 1 is equal to 1. Find limit x tends to 0 of sin 3x divided by 6x. Solution. Use the fact that limit alpha tends to 0 of sin alpha by alpha is equal to 1. Rewrite sin 3x divided by 6x can be written as 1 by 2 multiplied by sin 3x divided by 3x. Then, limit x tends to 0 of sin 3x divided by 3x is 1. We conclude that limit x tends to 0 of sin 3x divided by 6x is 1 by 2. Find 
limit x tends to 0 of 1 minus cos x multiplied by 1 plus cos x plus cos square x divided by 1 minus cos square x. Solution given limit x tends to 0 of 1 minus cos x multiplied by 1 plus cos x plus cos square x divided by 1 minus cos square x is equal to limit x tends to 0 of 1 minus cos x multiplied by 1 plus cos x plus cos square x divided by 1 plus cos x multiplied by 1 minus cos x limit x tends to 0 of 1 plus cos x plus cos square x divided by 1 plus cos x as x tends to 0 x not equals to 0 therefore cos x not equals to 1 and cos x minus 1 not equals to 0 we get 1 plus cos 0 plus cos square 0 divided by 1 plus cos 0. 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1. And we get 3 by 2. Derivatives. Derivatives are all about change. They show how fast something is changing called the rate of change at any point. Let us get straight into an example. The function x square. fx is equal to x square. Here are some values. For x is equal to 0, the value of fx is 0. For x is equal to 0 0.5, the value of fx is 0 0.25. For x is equal to 1, the value of fx is 1. For x is equal to 1.5, the value of fx is 2.25. For x is equal to 2, the value of fx is 4. For x is equal to 2.5, the value of fx is 6.25. Below is the graphical representation. As x increases, so does fx. But how fast? Can we find the slope or rate of change at any point? The answer is yes. With derivatives, we can. The derivatives gives the slope of the curve at any point. Definition 1. Suppose f is a real valued function and a is a point in its domain of definition. The derivatives of f at a is defined by Limit h tends to 0 of the difference between f of a plus h and f of a divided by h, provided this limit exists. Derivatives of f of x at a is denoted by f dash of a. The f dash of a denotes the change in f of x at a with respect to x. Definition 2. The function limit h tends to 0 of the difference between f of x plus h and f of x divided by h, wherever the limit exists is defined to be the derivative of f at x and is denoted by f of x. This definition of derivatives is also called the first principle of derivative. Sometimes f dash of x is denoted by d by dx of f of x. Let y is equal to f of x, then d by dx of y or capital D of fx. The derivative of f at x is equal to a is denoted by d by dx of f of x at x is equal to a or Example Find the derivatives of the function f of x is equal to 3x square plus 9x minus 12 at x is equal to 5. Solution f dash of 5 is equal to limit h tends to 0 of f of 5 plus h minus f of 5 by h. Now by calculating it further as shown below, we get f dash of 5 is equal to 39. Find the derivative of the function fx is equal to 1 upon x square. We have Solution We have limit h tends to 0 of the difference between f of x plus h and f of x divided by h which is equal to limit h tends to 0 of 1 1 by x plus h whole square minus 1 by x square divided by h. By calculating it, we get f dash of x is equal to 
minus 2 by x cube. Derivatives Algebra of derivative of functions Theorem 5 Let f and g be two functions such that their derivatives are defined in a common domain. Then derivative of their sum is Derivative of their differences Derivative of their product is Derivative of the quotient of two function is Theorem 6 If f of x is equal to x raised to the power n Then f dash x is equal to n into x raised to the power n minus 1 Where n can be any real number Derivatives of polynomials and trigonometric functions Let f of x be a polynomial function where a is all real number and a n not equals to 0 then the derivatives of the function is given by d by dx of f of x is derivative of trigonometric functions differentiation of sin x is equal to cos x Differentiation of cos x is equal to minus sin x. Differentiation of tan x is equal to sec square x. Differentiation of sec x is equal to sec x tan x. Differentiation of cosec x is equal to minus cosec x cot x. Differentiation of cot x is equal to minus cosec square x. Example. Differentiate y is equal to 8x raised to power 23 plus 5x raised to power 12 minus 8x. Solution. By applying the theorem given below. If fx is equal to x raised to the power n, then f dash x is equal to n into x raised to the power n minus 1, where n can be any real number. We have y dash is equal to 8 into 23x raised to power 23 minus 1 plus 5 into 12x raised to the power 12 minus 1 minus 8. y dash is equal to 184 into x raised to power 22 plus 60 into x raised to power 11 minus 8. Differentiate y is equal to x raised to power 4 plus 7x minus 1 into 5x plus 2. Solution By using the product rule of differentiation, we have y dash is equal to x raised to power 4 plus 7x minus 1 into differentiation of 5x plus 2 plus differentiation of x raised to power 4 plus 7x minus 1 into 5x plus 2. By calculating it, we get y dash is equal to 25x raised to power 4 plus 8x raised to power 3 plus 70x plus 9. Differentiate y is equal to 15x square plus 13x plus 18 by 16x square minus 3x plus 8. Solution given y is equal to 15x square plus 13x plus 18 by 16x square minus 3x plus 8. By using the quotient rule of differentiation, we have y dash is equal to differentiation of 15x square plus 13x plus 18 into 16x square minus 3x plus 8 minus 15x square plus 13 plus 18 into differentiation of 16x square minus 3x plus 8 by 16x square minus 3x plus 8 whole square. By further calculating it, we get y dash is equal to minus 253x square minus 336x plus 158 by 16x square minus 3x plus 8 whole square. Did you know the notation dy by dx that we use today is given by Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. The calculus that we use in this era was developed by Sir Isaac Newton. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Limit means approaching. There is a right-hand limit and left-hand limit. It is possible that they can coincide. Limit of sum of two functions is the sum of the limits of the functions. Limits 
x tends to a of f of x plus g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x plus limit x tends to a of g of x. Limit of difference of two functions is difference of the limits of the functions. Limit x tends to a of f of x minus g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x minus limit x tends to a of g of x. Limit of product of two functions is product of the limits of the functions. Limit x tends to a of f of x into o g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x multiplied by limit x tends to a of g of x. Limit of quotient of two functions is quotient of the limits of the functions whenever the denominator is non-zero. Limit x tends to a of f of x by g of x is equal to limit x tends to a of f of x by limit x tends to a of g of x. For any positive integer n, limit x tends to a of the difference between x raised to the power n and a raised to the power n by the difference between x and a is equal to n multiplied by a raised to the power n minus 1. The first principle of derivative is limit h tends to 0 of the difference between f of x plus h and f of x divided by h. Derivatives of the sum of two functions is d by dx of the sum of f of x and g of x is equal to d by dx of f of x plus d by dx of g of x. Derivatives of the difference of two function is d by dx of the difference of f of x and g of x is equal to d by dx of f of x minus d by dx of g of x. Derivatives of the product of two function is d by dx of f of x into g of x is equal to g of x into d by dx of f of x plus f of x into d by dx of g of x. Derivatives of the quotient of two function is d by dx of f of x by g of x is equal to g of x into d by dx of f of x minus f of x into d by dx of g of x divided by square of g of x. If f of x is equal to x raised to the power n, then f dash of x is equal to n into x raised to the power n minus 1, where n can be any real number.